Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi My name is John Fontaine and welcome back to the Fiqh of Love. We joined again here with Dr. Muhammad Salah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, John. How are you doing, Sheikh? I'm doing great, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You tell me, how about yourself? Huh? How about yourself? Yeah, alhamdulillah. I'm just very excited. It's a great program. It's going well. We're learning so much from you. Alhamdulillah. The, alhamdulillah. the love Sheikh, we should call you, I think. <laughs> what do you think? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, um, in the last episode, uh, we were speaking you know, about the wedding night. You know, we mentioned that obviously a lot of the times people are very worried about this night. It's something new, especially the woman, you know, meeting the man for the, for the first time, being alone with technically someone she's never really spent time with before. So it, bec it bec became quite worrying for them. And uh, alhamdulillah, you gave us some great advice on this. And, you know, from the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu explaining how he was with his wives. And subhanAllah, today we, will speak it, we want to speak about after uh, the intercourse. Uh, but, but also some of the restrictions around intercourse as well. So we'll start with the restrictions. What things are not permissible uh, with the consummation of the marriage? Bismillah rahman rahim You know, John, Allah, it is very important to discuss this matter because uh, as you and I in the beginning of this program, as we were thinking about it, there are a lot of people who do not make their homework mm. before actually getting married. And that can lead to falling into some sins or major sins, or major faults, and also can lead to separation later on. Among the, the drawbacks of not learning uh, what is halal and what is haram in marriage uh, is things around the sexual relations. Mm -hmm. For innocence, a major thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah when he said, this is a very comprehensive ayah in this respect. So the ayah says when people ask you, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, concerning al-mahid, yani the menses, the monthly period. Uh, which women experience when they reach the age of puberty until menopause. Tell them it is harmful, so you should not approach your wife sexually, and you should not have sexual intercourse during the menses. That is the only mm. time that you should avoid having complete intimacy with your spouse during the menses, even through a barrier that is not permissible. Hatta um, yathurn until the tahara so the ayah explains not once the menses is over you can just uh, have sexual relations no not before the woman will perform ghusl and remove the remains of the impurities from the office mm. and then perform ghusl to live the major impurity then you can have uh, the sexual relations so is, does this also include like foreplay and things like this uh, things that are not related to this? no no what is restricted is only concerning having a complete sexual intercourse okay. and as a matter of fact some of the wives of the Prophet وسلم, whether Aisha or Umm Salama and others have shared with the Ummah and with the uh, companions the lady companions that whenever any of them would have her menses, and it is her night. Mm. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tattazir, tattazir to wear the izar, mm. yani to wear something on the bottom, so that this area is restricted. And then they would cuddle, and they would sleep next to each other, and so on. Whatever a couple can do of kissing and hugging, mm. and, uh, you know, and cuddling together, as long as mm. you avoid the sexual intercourse. Why? Because it's not only the man who have physical desires and has physical needs. It is also the woman. Mm. And during her PMS and during the period, the woman is uh, in need for more emotions than any other time. So it is not only because the man wants to satisfy his sexual desire, so she's got to be ready. But also she has some needs mm. and the man has to pay attention to that. Yeah. So the Prophet ﷺ used to take care of that and he taught us 
this something we're learning from the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So kissing, hugging, as long as everything, as long as you avoid mm. having sexual relations in the office, then it is uh, permissible. During the menses, I mean. So is there any more restrictions with, in terms of uh, intercourse? Well, uh, the ayah says also, Subhanallah, فَإِذَا تَطَهَرْنَا فَأْتُوهُنَّ مِنْ حَيْثُ أَمَرَكُمْ الله. The answer is a very common question, but indirectly. Or it is specific to the point without exposing what people talk about. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after the tahara, after the purification and performing ghusl, after the menses, mm. and similar to the menses is the post-delivery bleeding, mm. which can last for days or last for a month or even more. So after the bleeding stops and a woman performs ghusl and cleans up the office, mm. then فَإِذَا تَطَهَرْنَا you may now embrace them sexually in the orifice which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitted for you. How long does this usually take? Which issue? Uh, like after giving birth and things like this? Well, that varies from a woman to another. So mm. some women actually, uh, uh, you know, it can be a day or two. And some women last uh, beyond 40 days. Mm. So once the bleeding stops and she performs ghost, you can go ahead and enjoy the sexual relations. But did you mm. pay attention to what the ayah says? فَأْتُوهُنَّ مِنْ حَيْثُ أَمَرَكُمُ اللَّهِ Allah the Almighty permitted and allowed sexual relations only in one orifice. Mm. The front orifice, not the real one. Mm. It is absolutely forbidden and it's a major mm. sin to approach a woman in the real orifice. Okay. As a matter of fact, the Prophet وسلم, made it equivalent to kufr. SubhanAllah, very strict, Sheikh. SubhanAllah, so the, just to clarify, the anal sex is forbidden. Yep, mm. absolutely. Yeah. Mm. No difference of opinion in this regard. It is absolutely forbidden mm. and it is equated to kufr or disbelief. SubhanAllah. You see, when you say strict, no, it's not strict. Mm. There is only a restriction during the menses mm. and having uh, intercourse in any office other than the uh, front one. Yes, yeah, subhanAllah, some people ask if oral sex is also permissible. Well, I don't mind you're asking this question because as a matter of mm. fact, youth now started asking those questions. Mm. Uh, so when, when I have a reference and when I have a text, I will throw it at you and I say, this is haram. Like mm. when you just spoke about anal sex and said, no, this is absolutely forbidden. There is no reference in this regard, but it is something to many people disgusting. Mm. Okay, so if you avoid it, that is definitely better. Mm. In addition to, this is one of the easiest way of transmitting diseases. Mm. So this is also a medical reason to avoid it. But is there a reference or a text which says it is haram? No, there is not. Jazakallah mm. So Sheikh, now I want to I want to move on to ghusl. You know, after the uh, wedding night, or if you like the uh, consummation of the marriage, mm. you know, we need to bear in mind that the, the Salah is coming, you know, Fajr or whatever time it may be. You know, how do we prepare ourselves now after having intercourse for the Salah? You know, ordinary people who do not necessarily follow the order and they do not know the Wajibat and the Arkan and, and the Sunan, they just go to the shower place. They say Bismillah. And in their hearts, they intend to do Ghusl so that they left the uh, impurity of having sexual relations is it sufficient is sufficient as long as they cover the entire body with water they wash their bodies from head to toe uh, women who have their hairs in braids they don't have to undo it so the water will just uh, fall from top to bottom or if you're using any tool to wash it is sufficient if you're talking about the proper order and the sunan and the adab and the etiquette then we can explain in, in further detail if you're interested. Yeah, I think for briefly we can we can go into it. Inshallah. So uh, the person should begin by washing their hands, then washing the private part, Subhanallah, then performing wudu, okay, mm. then pouring the water on the right side of the body while rubbing, okay, the underarm between the toes, between the fingers, okay, between the thighs then 
uh, pour in the water while washing the body and rubbing the body on the left side. Then one more time all over the body. And by that you perform the rest. Also, mm -hmm. if you, um, uh, you know, if you want to perform wudu so that you leave from the shower place ready to pray, that would be, uh, that is permissible and that would be great. So at what point does ghusl need to be made? Because, you know, if somebody, maybe they've not, they're not sure if they've actually even made intercourse, you know, maybe uh, there was no discharge or etc. Well, again, situation. in belief, ghusl is uh, mandated for both men and women uh, upon experiencing wet dream and seeing the sexual discharge or the signs of having sexual discharge. Sometimes a person may have a wood dream, but without sexual discharge. Mm. A man or a woman, then ghusl is not required. Even if you still remember the dream perfectly, like complete sexual relations, mm. but there is no sign of sexual discharge, then or ihtilam, mm. then there is no ghusl. Um, and also if the person just gets up and they find that they have sexual discharge, even if they don't remember that they have experienced wood dreams. And we also have to educate the youth in this regard because this is a sign of reaching the age of puberty. Mm. So when we're talking about the couple, husband and wife, they can help and assist each other in understanding that because there are no restrictions between them. They can talk about mm. all things and all kind of things. Mm. The wife can talk to the husband, the husband can ask a sheikh on her behalf and so on. But the youth, I hope, inshallah, they will pay attention to that. A lot of people, they reach the age of puberty and they keep experiencing with dreams. They don't understand. Mm. They just throw their clothes in the laundry mm. and they move on. No, mm. the prayer is invalid. Yeah, well, the prayer is invalid. Mm. And if you perform tawaf, it's invalid. You have to perform ghusl to live mm. this major impurity. You know, this is a very important point because, Sheikh, I get a lot of messages on Facebook, especially of young brothers, mm. some of them asking for advice and support, um, some of them who fell into sins of watching pornography and things like this. Mm. And they even. Uh, you know, masturbating and things like this throughout the day. Mm. And they're saying that they're praying without whistle. No, masturbation even, or inducing yeah. sexual discharge, mm. besides being forbidden, it requires performing ghusl. So if the salah is done without ghusl, is it accepted? No, of course that is not valid yeah. and the prayer will not be accepted. Besides the fact that masturbation is forbidden mm. or inducing oneself to release sexual discharge by any mean other than having a valid relationship with the spouse that requires ghost as well mm. so there is a sexual discharge due to wet dreams mm. due to sexual intercourse due to masturbation due to masturbation it requires ghost and if the person doesn't know and he prayed like that the prayer is invalid as a matter of fact we're not here only teaching the couple who are already married or about to get married. Our youth who reached the age of puberty, not too many of whom attended fiqh classes, mm. they don't understand that what dreams require was mm. yeah. And sexual discharge due to masturbation, it's haram and it requires ghusl. Mm. You cannot read Quran with this kind of mm. impurity. You cannot um, enter the masjid. You cannot offer the prayer you cannot perform tawaf because you are in a state of major impurity mm. you must perform ghusl mm. likewise when um, Sheik, a this, couple this is not just uh, the youth sure mm. that we have adults which maybe they've not they don't actually know this and maybe for many years they've been praying with you know and, and they're not but pure just what uh, john there mm. are things which the person may be given the benefit of doubt in the regard like well I didn't know but when it comes to tahara when it comes to tahara no excuse because every Muslim whether you're educated whether you are a doctor whether you are a janitor whether you are a man or a woman young or old you must learn the ahkam of tahara because mm. the almighty Allah does not accept salah without kuhur and does not accept Sadaqah uh, from Ghulul. This mm. is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Inna Allah la yaqbalu salatan bi ghayr kuhur wa la sadaqatan min Ghulul. A prayer which is offered without purification isn't accepted. And a sadaqah which is given from money which was earned unlawfully will not be accepted uh, as well. Mm. You add to that if the person prays without tahara knowingly, that itself is a major sin. Mm. 
unknowingly it becomes our role to educate people and to spread the word and that's why we're crossing a lot of red lines when you're asking about when you're asking about masturbation when you're bringing up the issue of the oral sex or the anal sex if we don't talk about it some people would say well i didn't yeah. know yeah. and some people some husbands take advantage of the innocence of these spouse yeah. and he says it's perfectly halal so now we're saying what is haram here so that everybody knows what is halal and what is haram jazakallah khair shaykh jazakallah khair we'll just take a, a short break and sure. we'll come right back join us in a few minutes for the fiqh of love Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My name is John Fontaine and welcome back to the Fiqh of Love. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shaykh, you know, some viewers may find this topic or these, this uh, episode uh, quite strange to listen to. Because explicit. It, yeah, because explicit, that's a good word. Because in a lot of cultures, these things are not addressed. But I personally believe that some of the problems or many of the problems that we have in marriage uh, are because these 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 problems have not been addressed beforehand. So so although it may be taboo in some cultures, I think it's very beneficial uh, that we actually cover these things. So Jazakallah, thank okay, you for uh, 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 our children. Uh, schools are learning sexual education, mm. and unfortunately, not in the positive way, rather mm. in the very negative way. Yeah. So whoever thinks that the youth and the children do not know much. Actually, he's the one who doesn't know much. Yeah. And uh, whenever a woman came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Oh Prophet of Allah, Inna Allah la yastahiyya min al-haq. Allah doesn't shy off to say the truth and present the truth. So I have a question, and the question was pertaining to women issues. If this woman did not ask this question, and no one have asked this question, it would have still... Uh, been vague mm -hmm. and people would wonder uh, about the answer but this woman Umu Sulaim came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and as the question it was about women experiencing war dreams mm -hmm. you know because it's about Tahara mm -hmm. it's about offering the prayers because without Tahara I cannot offer the prayer and it's not only once or twice there is something that happens very awfully and it happens to most people yeah, subhanAllah. So even from the early generations, we see that we should ask these questions if we don't know. Of course. It's very important. So, Sheikh, uh, I also wanted to ask you, we were speaking about ghusl just before the break. And is it okay for a husband and wife to bathe together, you know, to wash together in this, you know? To yes, indeed, it is yeah. permissible. And Aisha radiallahu anha said that she and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we're talking about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they used to bathe together and uh, they used to take water from the same uh, uh, vessel and he would say leave some for me and she would say leave some for me you know why would Aisha narrate to us something like that it is in order to tell us what is halal and haram in this regard so that some people who would have the concept of that this is haram why because it doesn't uh, click in their mind mm. so they they make it haram or they make it halal based on their hawa, mm. you know, what they think yeah. of. No, it's about what Allah or His Messenger وسلم, made haram or halal. So bathing together, a husband and wife, is perfectly legal and halal. Yeah. So in terms of, uh, you know, having experienced the, the night of marriage, uh, you know, consummating the marriage, how important is it to keep these matters private? It is extremely important not to speak about the personal relationship between the couple before anyone, not even your brothers or sisters, your close friends. In the hadith, which is a sound hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna min shirar al al Among the worst people on the Day of Judgment, a man who would have sexual relations with his spouse, with his wife, and then he would share that with his friends, with people. And a woman who would have sexual relations with her husband and she would share that with her friends. 
What goes on behind a closed door and in bed should be kept between the husband and wife completely. You may say, what about if there is actually a clinical issue and I'm consulting a doctor with regards to some sexualities, some pain that the woman feels during the sexual relations. So she is explaining to her what happens. Is that permissible? This is different because this is for a medical reason and with conditions. What the Prophet ﷺ was referring to is the joy in sharing what happened in bed and what kind of sexual position we had last time uh, or last night mm -hmm. and how many times we had sexual relations. All of that should not be discussed with no one other than the couple themselves. So in terms of uh, sexual etiquettes, what type of sexual etiquettes do we have examples of in the Sunnah? Um, as long as you avoid what is forbidden, then anything else is permissible or even recommended. So you asked me earlier about taking medications which help in the sexual relations. If that is prescribed by doctor, it's permissible. Wearing perfume, applying some lubricants, or whatever would facilitate this problem, consult your doctor in this regard. Mm -hmm. A lot of people experience severe pain in the sexual relations. It shouldn't be painful, it shouldn't be problematic, it shouldn't be a torture for the woman. Mm -hmm. It should be uh, joyful, it should be um, a, a means of happiness and pleasure, experiencing pleasure and satisfying the sexual desire. But many women uh, complain that they feel that they are experiencing severe pain because mm. the guy is like a monster. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't understand that it's a matter of introduction, foreplay, taking it easy, and also using whatever is prescribed by uh, doctors or as far as medications or things which would fac facilitate this mm. process and make it smooth. Mm. Sheikh, we have a question uh, regarding, is it permissible to have uh, intercourse in the bathroom? You know, somewhere where there's a toilet. Yes, it is permissible. Mm. Whether in the bathroom, in bed, on the couch, on the sofa, that is all permissible. Yeah. And also... But one thing mm. we, we, we need to mention, mm. and it is really important uh, as far as the consummation of the marriage, and on every single time that the couple would have an intimate relationship, uh, it's a supplication that the Prophet mm. recommended to be recited by the couple before having sexual intercourse, mm. which is Allahumma jannibna shaytan wa jannibish shaytana ma razaqtana. The supplication is amazing. You are asking Allah the Almighty to keep Satan away from you while having the sexual relationship, and also you're asking Allah to protect. You're a child, if you were to have a child due to the sexual relations, if your wife gets pregnant as mm. a result of that, so may Allah protect the child from Satan mm. as well. Uh, it is due to the fact that the Prophet wasallam said, whenever somebody enters into his house, if he says Bismillah, mentions the name of Allah, then Satan and his followers, if he's bringing his gang with him, they will not be able to enter the house. Mm. They will keep, be kept outside. But if the man and the woman and the child and the grown-up just walk in and they say nothing, they do not mention the name of Allah, they come in and they bring Satan's with them into the house. Mm. It creates a lot of problems, a lot of fights at home. Then also at the time of eating, the Prophet Sallallahu said, if the person starts eating right away without saying Bismillah, Satan and his gang and his followers, the rest of Satan's will come with him. They enter the house. Now they will enter uh, into the dining room and they will enjoy dinner with you as well. And the Prophet ﷺ said, as shaytan will say, al-asha. We guaranteed dinner tonight here. So we guaranteed yes, lodging and we guaranteed dinner. Yes. Then if the person was to have sexual relations, with his or her spouse without saying the supplication, shaitan will be involved as well. Mm. 
So it's highly, highly recommended upon every time that we're having sexual relations to say, both say, Allahumma jannibna shaytana wa jannib shaytana ma razaqtana. So if they are being blessed with a child, then he will be protected from a shaytan, he or she. Jazakallah khair. Shaykh, just before we finish, I want to speak about romance and the language of love. Mm. What are some of the ways we can speak to our partners? I, th I think you know and better. <laughs> and I'm not just speaking about mm. how the man can speak to the woman. I'm also mm. speaking about how the woman can address the man as well. You see, now the husband and wife are closer to each other than their own parents mm. and their own siblings. The ayah describes this relationship in a very eloquent way. The Almighty Allah says, Hunna libasun lakum, wa antum libasun lahun. A libas is a garment. Your wives are like your garments. And you are to your wives are like their garments, which are the closest thing mm. to their skin, to their bodies. So one has to take every advantage to share with his or her spouse their feelings. And even to exaggerate, that creates love. Exchange gifts. The Prophet ﷺ said, Tahadu, tahabu. So whenever she is fixing a very nice and delicious meal, you're walking home, anything, some roses. Uh, not every day you're going to buy a gift. Mm. Not every as long day as you're going to buy a ring. She doesn't have hay fever. <laughs> you, know, you see some people buy flowers, that yeah. she gets sick. Al kalimatu tayyibatu sadaqa. When you ring the bell, you have the key, but you intend to ring the bell. Maybe she's in the kitchen. Mm. She's not ready yet. So especially if you happen to come earlier, you ring the bell, who is it? That's me, honey. So she would run and, you know, wash her face, comb her hair, okay? Or mm. she would open the door and she say, you know, uh, give me a minute. She needs to fix herself. That's nice. You have to appreciate that as well. You know the Prophet mm. ﷺ, whenever he was traveling, for Umrah, for Jihad, for an expedition, mm. he would not come home right away. He would come and begin by the masjid. So that's ringing the bill. Everybody knows the Prophet and his companions have returned. They didn't have cell phones. Mm. They didn't have WhatsApp or social media. So their wives do not know that they have come back. So when they come to the masjid, the word will be spread and the wife will prepare herself and get ready. And if the Prophet ﷺ have arrived at night, he will encamp outside al Medina and he would not enter al Medina, Not to surprise his wife, so that men would not surprise their wives at night. This is a lot of beautiful prophetic etiquette that we need to pick up. Beautiful, Shaykh. And that's all we have time for today. So uh, hopefully we can carry on with that next time, inshallah. Jazakallah khair for joining us. And uh, we'll see you next time inshallah Insha for those of you at home join us next time for another episode of the fiqh of love assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh